Hello everyone and welcome to this fourth video in the series on Koi Visto's opening repertory. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at 1d4 Knight f6. So let's have a look. What is uh, um, Koi Visto's main line after d4 Knight f6? It wants c4, e6, Knight f3 and then d5 and uh, Knight c3, d takes c4. We already saw that in the uh, in the overview. Uh, that uh, it likes the Vienna game and uh, this sharp double pawn sacrifice. Castles. Um, we're not going to have a look at that anymore. We're going to have a look at some other ideas that uh, black can play. In particular, instead of uh, playing uh, d5, there are quite a few other things that, um, that you can do. One of the things is to play c5 and transpose back into a modern Benoni after d5. Now, this is quite decent for black when white's already committed the knight to f3. Um, whilst white hasn't committed the knight to f3, the chance of white playing e4 and f4, the old flick knife variation that we saw um, uh, um, also uh, espoused by uh, Komodo Dragon, um, that's a risk. But with the knight on f3, there are only less dangerous systems against the modern Benoni. Doesn't mean that it's good, but it's maybe not terrible. Um, which system does Coivisto want? It wants this one actually. So it plays h3. And you sort of think it's going to play e4 and bishop d3, which is uh, the main line. But it prefers the uh, bishop f4 system uh, and then e3. And this is quite a, quite a decent system, also quite a, quite a main line system. The bishop um, attacks the pawn on d6. Pawn on h3 gives the bishop um, a retreat square, also stops bishop g4 or knight g4. And putting the pawn on e3 rather than e4 doesn't make it so much of a target. So black's counterplay with, um, with b5, which is always meant to destabilize the white center, particularly a pawn on e4, that isn't going to be, really be possible. And... Uh, well, uh, we follow um, uh, theory for a little while here. Uh, Quivista wants a really quick response here, playing knight e4 quickly. Bishop d6, rook d8, bishop takes c5. And then, um, well, there's a 2018 game where um, black went a bishop b2. And after bishop d4 takes, queen takes, takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook c1. White had a very nice advantage here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, queenside pieces are undeveloped. We've got bishop f3 to attack uh, the pawns, and uh, rook can come into the seventh. It's a very nice ending for white. Um, so Corvisto prefers rook takes d5 straight away. Bishop d4, knight c6, castles, takes, takes. And, uh, well, that pawn on d4 is not particularly strong, but it's also not particularly easy to win. And, uh, well, Corvisto line continues bishop e6, bishop d3, bishop e6, takes, takes, queen d3. And, uh, well, you know, black's going to line up on the uh, d4 pawn, but uh, white should get some uh, some play elsewhere. Corvisto thinks 0 0.93, maybe a little on the uh, optimistic side, but, um, um, yeah, interesting nonetheless. This is quite a, quite a decent system, this uh, bishop f4 and e3. Um, also, apart from uh, from d5 and c5, we can also play um, b6 as well, which is the uh, the queen's Indian. And uh, there, once again, I mean, all of the engines, uh, I suppose ever since alpha zero, all they want to play is 4g3. No other move really cuts it. And um, Coivisto, again, plays for a super solid line that uh, I've played a lot against the... Um, uh, uh, the Queen's Indian and the Catalan as well. I um, actually had a game uh, with this um, against uh, Peter Wells, in actual fact, uh, not so long ago in the 4NCL. And um, knight d2 played, uh, bishop b7, castles knight bd7, takes takes e4 and rook d8. Quite uh, interesting here. e5 is a novelty from uh, Coivisto. And after knight e8, takes takes f4. Then, um, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty unclear position. I mean, uh, 0.31 according to Koi Visto, but, uh, but plenty of play. So, um, yeah, quite interesting uh, stuff from there. Um, apart from uh, d5, we've also got bishop b4, check, the Bogo Indian. And this is a really, this is a bit of a weird one, because after knight bd2, um, the normal uh, way that black's playing um, is to go castles, wait for a3, and then play uh, e4 d5 can get quite uh, quite hairy you know sort of lines like um, bishop d3 and uh, an h4 are quite common you know so uh, pretty aggressive but um, actually after knight bd2 Coivisto just plays bishop e7 straight away intending uh, d5 
So um, um, white plays e4 and we play d5. And I suppose Black's point is that, um, uh, I mean, actually, the inclusion of a3 in castles just uh, increases the danger on, uh, on Black's king. So better to play this line whilst you've still got, um, uh, well, you're still uncastled and uh, you're not going to be under immediate attack. So, um, yeah, if you go um, e5, I think just knight fd7 and then c5 afterwards. It looks like a line of the French that I've played uh, from time to time. And uh, um, after bishop d3, which is Coivisto's main line, we get c5, d takes c5, d takes c4. Takes, 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 queen d1, bishop c5. And uh, White's well, got a small advantage here, but it's not very, very serious. And uh, um, after king e2, f5, knight c6, bishop d7 and castles, well, black seems to be doing pretty fine, really. So that's quite uh, quite interesting. An interesting little wrinkle in the uh, in the Bogo Indian there. Just uh, that one caught me completely by surprise. Now, of course, um, you know d4, uh, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3 is what um, uh, Coivisto wants. Um, there are other moves, and there's knight c3, for example, which I've played um, all my life. Um, Bishop b4, Nimzo Indian is what Coivisto wants. And once again, like Komodo Dragon, Coivisto also prefers e3 to any of the other moves that White has, like um, Queen c2 is a very common one, or uh, f3. Um, it's not amazingly impressive, but on the other hand, you know, I think Coivisto would say, well, you didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to play knight c3, you forced me to. Um, Bishop d2 is what, uh, what it wants. It has been played by strong players like uh, Ding, but know doesn't really feel like it's going to be uh, doing that much but uh, the idea is d5 a3 bishop e7 knight f3 b6 and we take take and go uh, bishop e2 c5 castles bishop b7 queen c2 knight d7 rook d1 it's okay it's okay but it's not um, absolutely amazing you have to say um, yeah you know this bishop uh, caught behind the pawn chain it's not really doing uh, that much it looks fine for white but I wouldn't uh, I would I would never really think that this would be leading to um, to an advantage um, but yeah this line is uh, preferred by uh, Coivisto over um, other lines like for example Queen c2 castles um, doesn't want to play um, a3 uh, because of uh, this line Queen c3 d5 uh, followed by b6 um, a line that um, was played a lot at the elite level by Kramnik first of all and uh, now it's basically the um, uh, the standard way of, uh, of dealing with four queen c2. So Coivisto tries to play knight f3 and after d5 plays e3 when we're into some sort of uh, yeah <laughs> odd um, e3 system really and uh, yeah this again is not so impressive to be honest. Uh, c5 takes takes bishop e2 knight c6 a3 and d4 and black's just uh, black's just liquidating there uh, again very very little for white 0.15 um f3 to be honest is uh, um, a lot more interesting here we saw that uh, komodo dragon wanted to play c5 and uh, you know strike back um uh, in the center straight away Quivista does something quite interesting um it plays uh, a system that uh, a very strong russian player tomashevsky has played um just takes takes d6 e4 and then knight h5 so threatening um knight uh, uh, queen h4 check knight h3 and then um e5 and uh knight f2 knight c6 yeah not too bad i suppose you know i mean um it's uh, a perfectly reasonable form of development but uh, doesn't look that thrilling to me i have to say there was uh, we follow a correspondence game for quite a while and it looks quite dangerous to uh, for black to me uh, h5 queen e7 g5 f5 and um well here the uh, correspondence game carried on with uh, h6 g6 d takes e5 we're looking for queen d5 check here uh, forking uh, the um uh, the knight and the king there bishop b7 check takes bishop b3 knight a5 which kind of looked dodgy to me but um well correspondence game pretty crazy and uh, and all sorts of weird and wonderful things happened here um, in the end, this game was uh, was drawn. Um, Coivista wants to play uh, g takes f6, knight f6, h6, g6, bishop g5, which is, again looks quite promising to me. Um, in the end, Coivista says it's 0 0.04 advantage, so basically just equal. But um, yeah, I do think that, you know, looking at all these lines uh, against the Nimzo Indian, 4 f3 
really looks like by far the most promising, really the one that sets black problems, the one where black really needs to remember a lot of variations to make it all, uh, to make it all happen. So, um, uh, yeah, between uh, Komodo Dragon and uh, Koi Visto, that's definitely the conclusion uh, I'm drawing uh, from that. Um, if you don't want to play um, three knight c3, then um, what you can play, uh, of course, is g3, which is the, uh, the Catalan. And uh, often, you know, transposes back into Queen's Indian lines. Um, again, Koi Visto going for the super solid line. Uh, so c6. Castles, castles, queen c2, b6, knight e5, bishop b7 here, rook d1, knight bd7. And yeah, the idea is simply that, um, okay, you just give white an advantage, a minimal advantage for the opening. White's managed to get the bishop pair. But uh, apart from that, black's got plenty of space and there's no immediate danger. And h6 is a, a Quivisto novelty. Um, and, well, I mean, uh, this position, uh, obviously, it's a little bit better for white. I wouldn't necessarily want to uh, to face this against uh, Magnus Carlsen, but um, it's not too scary for black in principle. So those are the uh, the Nimzo uh, Indian type things. Let's have a little look at uh, at some uh, uh, Grunfeldts or, um, uh, or uh, King's Indian type stuff. So G6. Now, actually, um, a Cuivisto chooses two different systems against the uh, the Grunfeld. Um, unlike Komodo Dragon, it doesn't uh, it generally doesn't play this knight f3 um, followed by e3 system. Plays knight c3, um, d5, and then takes takes e4. And bishop b3 is uh, one of its systems. And uh, yeah, I mean, I played this system uh, a lot, analyzed it so much, yet at the end didn't really feel that I got that much out of it. Um, knight d7, bishop d3, e5, d5 and f5 is how black's uh, playing it quite a bit, playing this uh, quick e5 and then going for f5. Bishop g5, bishop f6, we're following a game of David Navarro's against Salem, Prague 2022. Uh, David played um, h4, uh, Corvista wants to play knight f3, takes takes, knight f6, rook d1, king g7 castles. Um, h6 takes takes c4 queen b2 a little bit of cunning there threatening uh, queen takes uh, b7 check followed by e7 queen c7 bishop c2 still quite an unclear position black's king is a little bit airy but um, Coivisto thinks this is uh, you know reasonably even and uh, it doesn't seem much of an advantage for white after the further moves f4 queen a3 rook e8 rook there takes takes and rook e7 um, yeah, black can't really do that much, but uh, also hard for white to uh, to regroup the pieces. You know, the queen a3, rook d6 were a little bit awkward there. So um, that's quite interesting. Uh, one system against the Grunfeld. Another system against the Grunfeld that arises when, um, um, when we take a slightly different move order is... Uh, so c4, bishop g7, we go knight c3, d5. And here, Quivista wants to play bishop g5. I haven't seen many engines wanting that recently. Um, so knight e4, bishop f4, takes takes, c5, takes takes, e3, and um, yeah, I mean, you get this ending. I mean, to be honest, these lines are quite quite interesting for white if you can get into them. Um, you know, the, the, the fact of having pawns on e3 and d4 is um, a little bit of an irritation for, um, for Grunfeld players, or the one time that I played a Grunfeld structure and, uh, and, I, I, and I had to play against this structure with white, I have to say I was not very comfortable at all. In fact, I drifted terribly. So um, quite interesting. Um, we get this and this, and then Quivista wants to play King F1, and now recommends the novelty F5 instead of the previous game, Samalvo Agapov, Helsinki 2015, where, where black played Bishop D5. After F5, Knight G5, Bishop C4, takes Rook B1, takes King E2, yeah, I mean, you know, this is still, uh, there's still some complications in the ending. I mean, when the engine's played, of course, uh, make it look easy, you know, easy draw, you'd think. Playing it by yourself, probably not as simple as all that. So, uh, again, interesting uh, little idea there from Coivisto that this uh, Bishop G5 system against the, um, uh, against the Grunfeld. What does Coivista want to do against the King's Indian? Well, it's pretty boring, really, from that point of view. Um, nothing exciting at all. Um, whatever move order you choose, uh, Coivisto just always wants to play the classical with uh, with six knight f3. And after e5, it plays castles. 
Uh, like most engines, it uh, doesn't really think that uh, that knight a6 or knight c6 or knight d7 are the best moves. Wants black to play e takes d4, c6, and then a5. Um, yeah, I wonder a little bit about this, but um, but in any case, um, yeah, you know the classical uh, line e5 castles. That's what Coy Vista wants, and uh, it would yeah be happy to take on the Mardel Plata with knight c6, d5, knight e7. Do we have uh, anything else interesting? Well, um, there's the um, the Benko, of course. Um, always have to uh, uh, to think about the Benko, uh, but there was nothing too amazing there. Um, again, Quivisto is just taking the pawns, and again, like Komodo Dragon, it um, it didn't seem to care at all um, about taking on a6 before White plays e4. Just plays bishop g7 and uh, castles kingside and uh, well plays it like um, well we've seen games of Magnus in uh, in this line and games of other top level players as well. Somehow, somehow uh, you know um, this line bishop a6 e4 bishop f1. Uh, the black players now tend to assume that, um, that this is actually helping white, helping white develop and uh, helping white fight for the light squares rather than uh, causing weaknesses. find it quite amazing, to be honest, but uh, yeah, some things change in modern chess. You can't uh, keep it all back. Um, anything else that's, um, that's interesting in this line? I don't think so. There's a few more lines uh, in this uh, PGN, which is uh, you know, available uh, um, um, from, a, um, from a download point. So yeah, um, uh, you can take a look at that. But this was really the most uh, interesting stuff. A number of different uh, systems against the, um, uh, against the, uh, the Grunfeld, G3 against the Queen's Indian, um, and always the classical against, um, uh, against the King's Indian. So uh, pretty good uh, opening repertory there. In the final video, next one, we're going to uh, just take a little bit of a look at some weirder stuff. Um, some stuff like uh, 1b3, for example, or even 1f4. See you there, and thanks for watching.